Hello and welcome to week seven. We are only one week away from completing our eight week program now. Hopefully everyone's feeling nice and strong and fit when they go for their runs. Um, today's class is, as I sort of mentioned last week, going to be a little bit less intense on the legs. We're still going to feel quite the burn. We're focusing on our lateral sleep. So that includes our inner thigh muscles, outer glute muscles and our lateral, um, our obliques lateral abdominal wall. So this is really good for strengthening uh, any of that sort of side to side sway, keeping you nice and aligned as you run um, in that straight line. Um, so hopefully you enjoy it. A few different ones here today. Um, we're going to start seated. So if you can just make your way to the mat sitting cross-legged, if that's comfortable, legs out in front of you if you prefer. I just want you to close your eyes down. Take a big breath in. And as you exhale, I want you to feel where your sit bones are resting on the ground. Feel that point of contact. Take another breath in. And as you inhale, feel your spine lengthen. And then as you exhale, feel your ribs gently soften. A little bit of activity through the front of the stomach wall. Another big breath in and feel your head float up towards the ceiling like a balloon. And then as you exhale, just let all that tension melt away out of your shoulders. Let's take one more breath in here, just to feel those points of movement. And then as you exhale, gently open your eyes. And we're going to swing that right leg out to the right hand side to start with some mermaid stretches. Sit tall. I want you to imagine your body is, is sitting between two panes of glass here. So there's no room for movement forwards or back. Open the arms wide. Let your right hand reach to the ground and let your left arm reach overhead. Feel that your left sit bone stays grounded on the floor and let your left rib moves away from your left hip. Press up through the right palm, arms go wide. We let the left hand come down to the ground and the right arm stretches overhead. Again, right hip stays grounded and try to be soft through that left arm. Elbow bends, shoulder stays away from the ear. Press up through that left palm, reach the right hand to the ground this time we will tip forwards keep the left hip where it is bring your left hand towards the ground feel that rotation through your thoracic spine let your left rib come towards your right hip open back to the front press up through the right palm let the left hand hit the ground right arm stretches overhead right hip doesn't move and then let's rotate forward bringing that right rib towards the left hip and the right hand towards the ground open back to the front one more time over to the right. Hold in that side stretch, then twist forwards. And now I want you to walk your hands along the ground, out in front of you, all the way around to the left, pausing there, and then opening back to the front and sitting all the way up. Give the shoulders a roll and come down onto your left elbow. We're gonna work our left inner thighs here. So let your right knee rest on the ground in front of you and just hold that right hip nice and still. Stretch your left leg out really long along the ground on the mat and then raise your left leg up and down. Up and down. Now it doesn't have to go far. What I'd rather see is that your pelvis and your torso stay nice and stable and you're just hovering that left leg off the ground. We're using the left and the thigh muscles here, the adductors. Uh, if you're feeling a bit like bony on your left hip, you can put a towel there or you can kind of rotate your hips around until you feel like you're not on the point of your hip. Have a little experiment, uh, but if it's really uncomfortable, um, you might just need a little towel or pillow under there to soften it. You don't want to feel that like pressure. All right, let's lift that left leg and hold it there. And now just little pulses, so only halfway down to the ground. So it never quite touches the ground. Little pulses, should be starting to feel a little bit of warmth on that inner thigh area. A little bit, of, little bit of a burn starting to creep on. Let's do three more pulses and then lift the leg and hold it. Keep it up as high as you can and just wave it forwards and back. Not a big movement. Not like when we do our side sweep for our hip abductors, the glutes. This is probably moving, if I had my ruler out, maybe 10 centimeters, not much at all. Toes are pointed. Leg is long. Think of reaching it away from you as you wave it forwards and back. Let's pull back one more time, holding there. Little circles. These circles are probably about the size of an apricot. Quite small. Let's go five more in this direction. Three, two, 
Hold it there, back the other way. Just for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Can you hold it there? If you're dying, lower it down. If you're okay, put your right hand on the ground, support yourself. Use your core abdominals here. We're gonna float that right leg off the floor and bring it above the left and then squeeze the left and right legs together. Let's hold here for five, four, squeeze, 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 three, two, one, and rest. Well done. That definitely warmed up my left inner thigh area. Let's come up for a side bend now. So you'll have your left palm on the ground away from you. Your right foot flat on the ground, right knee points to the ceiling, and your left foot is on the outer edge. It might take a couple of these to get yourself in the right position. Let's rest the right palm on top of the right knee, open the chest and lift your chest away from the ground. Press through the right foot and the left palm, lift your hips up, straighten your knees and come into your side bend position. Now, if you need to shimmy your feet around, by all means do it now. Both hip bones point straight forward. If there was laser beams connected to my hips, they're shining straight at you. Reach your right hand to the ceiling and let that lengthen that whole side. So you're really actively pushing your chest away from the ground. We're not sagging down. Let's hold for a moment. Squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. Use those adductor muscles. And then we're going to bend the knees and come back down to our starting position. Knees bend, hip hits down, and then right hand comes on top of the right knee. Let's go again. So if you needed to adjust yourself, hopefully this time we're in the right spot. Press through that right foot, left palm, lift up tall, stretch. Try and reach the ceiling with your right fingertips. Lift through your left waist. Let's hold here for three, two, one, come down. So we're gonna add some pulses to our next one to really wake up those left obliques. So press through that right foot, lift yourself up, hold it here. Lower your hips towards the ground and then lift them up. Now what I want you to feel as you do this is that it's a real squeeze through that left side waist. So it's not a sort of sag through the shoulder. The shoulder is strong. The waist is doing the work. Keep those inner thighs squeezing towards each other. Let's do another two. Lift up, hold here. Nice and strong. Can you float your right foot off the ground? If not, just hold your side plank for five, four, three, two, one, and land it down. Well done. Roll the shoulders when you come onto our knees. So we'll keep working on those left obliques now. We're gonna put our hands behind our head. Again, grow the spine tall. Let's imagine we're back between our two panes of glass and then just stretch that left leg out to the side. You're on your toes, your leg is really long and your hips are still pointing forwards. Hand behind the head. Now, what we're gonna do is tip the right elbow towards the ground, lengthening through that left side and then squeeze the left ribs back towards the left hip. I learned this exercise just last week actually from a friend of mine and a fellow Pilates instructor, Chloe De Winter, and it really gets these obliques going. Inhale as you lower, and then exhale as you lift yourself back up. What you can imagine you're doing is like, if you went any further, you'd land on the ground, but you're saving yourself just before that happens. So tip, 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 and if you want to have a little bit of falling, that's fine, and then lift yourself back up. I guess that's the beauty of doing Pilates at home is you can afford to push yourself a little bit uh, and maybe fall over and it doesn't matter. No one can see. And that's actually the best way to progress is to sort of take yourself out of that comfort zone, give it a go, maybe not do it very well, but at least try it. And then you might find next time you can do it a bit more easily. Let's hold it in that position where we're tipped over now. Straighten your arms over your head. Feel that gets a bit harder and then bend your elbows again and sit yourself back up. So as our arms go long, we're putting more weight away from our waist, which makes it harder for those obliques to hold on and keep you in position. So let's inhale, tip, exhale, reach. Inhale, bend, exhale, sit back up. So we're still working really slowly, nice and controlled, lengthen, bend, and sit back up. Let's go two more here before we do a nice long hold. Tipping over. Hold it there, let's count to five, four, three, two, one, sit back up, well done. Now stay where you are, we're gonna bring our right hand to the ground, left hand to the ceiling, and then we'll raise that left leg off the ground. 
So still working through these left obliques here to help lift that left leg, but now we're getting our left abductors going or our glute muscles that we all sort of talk about and feel that nice burn in. So let's do another five of these. Don't need to do many of these. They really get things going pretty quickly. Two, lift and hold. Holding here, five, four, three, two, one. Can you press yourself back up and land on your knees? Well done. All right, give everything a little shake out and then let's come back down onto our bottoms. And this time we'll swing our legs around to the other side. I think that's the side I already did. Left leg beside and right foot beside the left thigh. Open the arms wide, lengthen the spine, picture yourself back between those two panes of glass and let's start by tipping to the left. Right arm reaches all the way overhead. Keep that right hip planted and let your right rib move away from your right hip. Press through the left palm, right hand hits the ground, left arm lengthens, really anchoring through that left sit bone. Let's go over to the left. Right arm reaches up and over. And now let's tip forward, right hand to the floor. Feel that really nice stretch through the right side. Back to the center. Right hand to the floor, left hand to the floor. Get that twist, left rib coming towards the right hip. Back to the middle. One more time we tip over to the left. Let's tip forwards. And now walk your hands around to the right hand side. And then open back up to the front and sit yourself tall, beautiful. Coming down onto your right elbow this time. Head on the hand. Right leg nice and long, left knee resting on the floor, left hand on your hip, and when you're ready, we're lifting the right leg off the ground. Toes are pointed, and you're getting that sense that you're reaching your leg away from you as you lift it. So it's a long lift. Exhale as you lift, inhale as you lower. We've got the left hand on the hip so we can feel if that starts to shrink in towards our ribs, because ideally we wanna keep our spine neutral through this. And the main reason we always bang on about neutral spine is because if you're moving your extremities, like your arms or your legs, and you're not stable through your spine, then the presumption is that you're starting to use muscles you don't really need to use. And what we're trying to achieve in Pilates is more efficient movement patterns. So if you can stabilize the trunk and, and strengthen the limb on its own, then you'll be able to move much more efficiently with less tax on your body. Hold it up, let's pulse. Halfway range, little pulses, three on the five, four, three, two, lift and hold. Let's wave the foot forwards and back. Keep it up as high as you can, just at a range that you can stabilize and manage. And remember this is like 10, 10 centimeters-ish. Haven't actually measured it. Um, forwards and back for another three. Two, one more, and then we circle. Little apricots, five, four, three, two, one, back the other way for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold it there. Left fingers to the floor, really center yourself here. If you haven't got your core on, you won't really land this. Let's bring the left leg to join the right. Squeeze the feet together, really squeeze them. Be here for five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Well done. Time for our side plank. So coming up onto your right palm, left foot is planted, left knee is opening towards the ceiling, and this, the outside edge of your right foot is resting on the ground. Let's go left hand on top of the left knee. Press through your right palm, press through your left foot, and lift yourself up straight and through the knees. So we'll take this one to set ourselves up. Hip bones ooh, are square, lifting the chest away from the ground, inner thighs squeeze towards each other, waist is on. Hold there for a moment, let's have a breath in, and then as you breathe out, bend through the knees and sit yourself all the way down. The chest is square, hips are square. Press up, lifting through the waist. Try and touch the ceiling with your left fingers, that really helps to create length across your chest. Let's hold for a break. big breath in. And as you exhale, sit back down. And now we've got our pulses. So let's lift up, hold it there, strong shoulder. Lower your hips towards the ground and then lift. Imagine this is where you're lowering and this is where you're lifting. 
all coming from that right waist. Let's do another four. Three, inhale to lower and exhale to lift. Two, lift it and hold it here. Ground yourself through the right foot. Can you lift your left leg in the air? If you can't, that's fine. We're just here for another three, two, one, and land it. Well done, coming onto your knees. So, our knees are hip width apart. Again, we're back between our two panes of glass. Connect the ribs towards the hips. It's really important. So that, that differentiation between lengthening with flared ribs and lengthening more through the back of your spine with engaged ribs is one of those things that when you get that, Pilates makes so much sense. So let's go. Imagine there's a couple of springs connected from your ribs here to your hips. So it's a little bit of tension through the front, but you're still tall. Hands behind the head. Step the right leg out to the side. Toes are on the ground. We tip the left elbow towards the floor. Imagine you're going to touch the floor, but you save it before you do. And back up. Let's lengthen right ribs away from the right hip and then pull back through that right waist. Let's inhale as we lengthen. Exhale as we squeeze back up. Good. And I want you to really picture, like when we did our mermaids, the rib moves away from the hip and then the rib moves towards the hip. And that's exactly the function of those obliques. We have obliques that um, move us sideways and obliques that, that twist us. And right now we're focusing on the sideways ones. So we inhale across and exhale lift. Let's add our elbow extension. So we'll tip over, reach long, bend and sit back up. Tip, reach, feel that extra strain and then sit up. Tip over, lengthen, bend, and sit. Just really light on those right, right toes. Okay, one more time and we'll hold it. Let's tip over, hold there, reach long. We're here for five, four shoulders away from the ears. Three, two, one, and sit yourself back up. That side for me feels so much weaker than the other. It's always worth paying a little bit of attention to that but it is so normal to be a little bit asymmetrical. So, left palm goes to the ground. Right hand can reach long or it can stay on your hip, whatever you like, and then we'll raise that right leg up. So we're in one nice long line here. Toes tap the ground and lift. Let's tap and lift. We've got another seven here. As I said last time, we don't need to do many of these. So now we're squeezing through those hip abductors. So we did the abductors before, abductors now and they really work together to help us stay symmetrical and stable as we drive forward. So let's lift and hold it. We're here for five, four, three, two, one. Press it up whoop, and land it. Good work. All right, give everything a little shake out. Hips side to side. And then we're gonna come down onto our mat on our back. Quick little abdominal sequence. All right, laying down, hands behind your head. Let's slide those ribs towards the belly and lift the chest. Now when you do your sit up or your crunch, we want you to still be neutral through your lower back. So you're not tucking your bottom in at the same time. You've got your tailbone really anchored down towards the ground and you're sliding your ribs towards your belly button. So they go in and down. And then the hands are just supporting the neck. Bring one leg at a time to tabletop. Keep the heels connected, but open the knees outwards. So you've made a dime and shape in between your legs. Let's just maintain our chest lift. We're going to straighten the knees, squeeze them together, and then bend them back out wide. Exhale, straighten, squeeze. Inhale, bend back out wide. Now, as your legs go long, have a look at your lower belly and make sure it's not popping upwards and your lower back's not arching. So we've got the little gap, but the gap should not grow as your legs go long. If you feel like it is, and your legs higher, okay? So the lower your legs go, the more challenging this is going to be on those lower abdominal muscles that support our spine. Let's exhale, lengthen, inhale, lay down. If you're feeling pretty good, let's progress. So we're going to reach the arms between the legs. And then as the legs straighten, we're going to lower our hands back over our head. We curl up a little bit higher as we reach between the legs. And then we lower about halfway as the legs go long. Exhale, lift. And then inhale, lie back down. Exhale, curl it up. Inhale, lay down. Let's go for another five. 
Four, really squeezing through those upper and lower abdominals now. Three. And down. Two more. Curl it up. One more time. Let's curl up and hold it there. Little pulses between the legs. We're here for eight, seven, six, five. Really flat through the tummy. Last three, two, one. Rest, knees come to chest, rock from side to side. Beautiful work. Pop your feet down, they're hip width apart. We're moving into a bridge and then we'll be standing up to finish with some um, standing work. For these bridges, I want you to have a quick look at your legs and make sure they're completely parallel. So the knees and the feet are all hip width apart. Rest your head back down and then press through your heels, roll your hips towards the ceiling. Hold them there, connect those ribs to hips, squeeze through the body muscles, pull the pivot bone towards the belly button. Really think of your bridges as a combo effort from your abs at the front and your glutes at the back. Pressing through the heels, I want you to squeeze your knees together and then open them back out. Squeeze them together, let them touch and then open back out. Let's exhale on the squeeze, inhale to release. Exhale to squeeze, inhale to release. Now, you might be feeling your inner thighs turn on again. I am. So those adductors are just working to bring the legs together. And isn't it amazing how much resistance there is to that movement, even without putting anything between the knees? It almost feels like you're squeezing a pillow or something. So let's do one more of these. Now keep the legs parallel, hip width apart, lower the hips down and up. We'll do four of these little thrusts and then we'll go back to four of our knee squeezes. So that's two. One more lift and hold and squeeze for four, three, two, one pulse, four, three, push through the heels, squeeze, four, three, two, one pulse, four, three, two, one squeeze, four, three, two, one more round, four, three, two, one squeeze, four, three, two, one parallel legs. We roll down bone by bone as slow as you can. Glutes are still squeezing, by the way. They're working to actively tuck that tailbone under so that you don't plonk down in one block. And then relax. Let's come into happy baby. Grab the outside edges of your feet. Straighten your feet towards the ceiling. Knees are still bent. And then just rock yourself side to side. This is a nice stretch. It looks a bit funny, but it feels good. And then let's just rock side to side. It's almost like you're pulling your knees towards your armpits. And if you want to have got straightening your legs, you can. If you want to keep them bent, whatever feels good to you. If you've got a preferred stretch you'd rather be doing right now, go for it. And then let's bring the legs together. We'll roll ourselves all the way up to standing for the last part of this class. So, stand on your mat. I want you to imagine there's a wall on the left of you. And that wall is touching your shoulder, your hip, your knee, and your ankle, all right? And we're going to use that wall to imagine what's going on with this exercise. So hands can go on your hips to start with. What I want you to do is imagine that your left knee is pressing against the wall, fold your hips backwards and tap the, the floor behind you. And then just tap your toes back to um, beside your left foot. Tap that foot back and forth. Good. Back and forth. Now, as your left knee bends, don't let it come away from the wall. Imagine you're actively pushing it against that wall. Let's do one more behind. Come to the middle. Now, let's tap to the right-hand side. Whoop. Tap and middle. Sit your hips back behind you as you tap. That'll really help. Keep your weight on your heel. One more. Let's go to the back and then the side. Now, you can see I'm using my running arms here. So we go opposite arm and leg. And then let's go, if you can, not tapping the floor in between. See if you can bring that right knee up in front of you. And tap. If you've got more space behind you than I do, you can really reach that right leg back. I'll just hit the wall. Let's go for two more of these. And then we're gonna do multiple. So we go back for four. Up, three. If you're still tapping the ground in between, that's fine. One and side, four, three. Keep touching the wall with that left knee, two, one, and back, Oop. four. Always lose my balance, three, two, 
two, one, and side, four, we've got one more round up to this, two, one, and back, four, sit your hips back behind you, two, one, and side, four, last round, three, two, one more, can you catch it at the top, hold it there, squeezing through your left glute, lengthening through your spine, imagine you should just grow like five centimetres taller, and then rest your right leg down, give your legs a shake, roll forwards, pedal through the knees, one leg bends at a time, and then let's soften both knees, roll yourself all the way up, roll the shoulders back, and now let's picture the walls on our right side. I might come forward a little bit so I don't tap the wall. Okay, so let's start with our hands on our hips. Step the left toes back, keep the wall beside that right knee, and then bring your toes back beside your right foot. Let's tap to the left and the middle, to the right and the middle. And as you tap, hips go back. Kind of like when we did our crab walks, um, or when you do your arabesques, that kind of feeling of really folding at the hips to help get those hip muscles engaged so it's not all on your knee. Sorry, I'm really puffed. I think I left the heater on. <laughs> Let's go. Running arms get involved. And then if you want to start lifting that knee up instead of tapping the ground, by all means, as long as your right knee is staying directly above your right ankle. If it's wobbling inwards, have a look down, you'll be able to see, I would suggest going back to just the floor taps so you've got that time to save yourself in between. Let's go back for four and up. Three, push your right knee against the wall. Two and one and side. Four, three, really drive through your heel and one and back. And don't forget, we've really warmed up our abdominal wall here and that's gonna help you. So the more stable your trunk can be, the less effort your legs are gonna have to be going through to keep you upright. Last round, back, three, nice and light with the toes, one and side, four, and then we get to stretch, two, one, catch it at the top, hold it there, grow taller, ribs are engaged, glutes are on, inner thigh is on, everything's working, and then pop it down and shake it out. Well done. Let's roll forwards, fingertips on the ground, and then I want you to heel toe your legs apart. Now, you can go as wide as you like with this. Bring, bring your palms to the ground. Just feel a little bit of an opening through the inner thighs there. And then let's walk our hands around to the right foot. And then walk your hands around to the left foot. And we're just going to flow through this. So you're going to feel all different places stretching. Inner thighs, hamstrings, mainly, maybe around your hips a little bit. And then let's come over to the right hand side, bend the right knee and really feel that left, left inner thigh area. Now your adductors go all the way from your groin to the inside of your knee. We've got a few different adductors that work there. So depending on where you feel the stretch, I feel it everywhere to be honest. Um, but you know, some people really feel it near the knee, some people really feel it near the groin. Um, and that can give you a little bit of an indication of which of your adductors are actually tight and need to stretch. So if you're feeling it closest to your knee, this is a good one. Knee straight and, and stretching through the inner thigh. If it's closer to the groin, you um, might find like your frog stretch or something where the knee is actually bent because that will target your short adductors a bit more. Let's hold over here to the right and now let's turn to face the front of your mat or the top of your mat and just sink your hips low. Open up through the front of that left hip here. Look forward, open the chest, and just come up onto the fingertips. And then we're going to straighten that right knee and push your left heel towards the ground and feel the, le the length down the back of the right leg. Again, shoulders are relaxed. And then let's pivot through the front. Bend into the left knee. Get the right inner, inner thigh stretching. Turn to the top of the mat, or perhaps the bottom of the mat. Look forward. Push the hips down and really tuck the pelvis forward. This should be all in the front of that left hip. And then let's straighten, sorry, right hip. Straighten through the left leg. Push the right knee towards the ground. Come into your triangle pose. Holding here for a big breath in. Bending back through that front leg. Let's come back to the front. Pausing our forward fold. 
Creep your feet back towards each other, heel to heel toe. Soften through both of your knees, press through your heels, squeeze through your thigh muscles, roll yourself all the way up. Big stretch through those arms, big circle. And now just come back down to the mat. Exactly where we started. Let's close down the eyes. Try and lengthen through the spine on your breath in. And then on your breath out, let the ribs engage. Another breath in, feel the head float towards the ceiling. One breath out, feel the tension melt out of your shoulders. One more breath in, feel yourself grounded to the mat. Breath out, roll the shoulders, open your eyes, and well done. You've completed seven weeks now in a row, and we only have one to go. I'll see you next week.